Hey guys, just a quick random video. I was posting our daily video on uh, YouTube this morning and then posted on YouTube and then on Patreon and then social media. And as I was posting it on social media, there was a story there because we follow the Japanese newspapers on social media just to sort of keep track of any news that might be happening. And there was a story there, I had a picture of this American guy, I read later it was, he was an American guy, um, wearing a huppy, which are those little light cotton coats that over, over top things that people wear at festivals here. Standing in front of a, a shrine, doing this big thing, pretty much like I talked about in a video recently about how to make a popular video on YouTube, you know, the big personality guy. And so here he is, hey, here I am at a shrine in Tokyo, you know. And uh, that the article was saying uh, how this guy is bringing Japan to the world and introducing the world to, to all these great things about Japan, right? And it just sort of triggered a few things because there's been a few other things that have come to light recently or come to mind recently um, on Japanese TV. Um, and that's the foreign personalities, right? The, the foreigners that have become popular on, on, on Japanese TV. And it's sort of, it's a bit similar to in that previous video talking about the formula to making a popular video on YouTube. There's also a, a, a formula for becoming a popular foreign personality on Japanese TV. And it's basically requires putting a filter on your comments and on your output so you'll see this and and that was obvious with this this dude that this this Japanese mainstream Japanese newspaper was basically promoting this guy and saying you know how wonderful it was that he was making these videos about Japan which it is you know um, this isn't a criticism of of positive videos or positive uh, perceptions of Japan or anything like that. That's that's not what this is about. That's not a criticism of that. In, it, fair to say, the majority of our videos are showing how wonderful Japan is, you know, because it is. It's just the reality. I mean, our thing is to try and show everything and anything about Japan, and the truth is, we love this place. So, um, obviously, as a result of that, the majority of our videos are in that tone. Look at this. Isn't this wonderful? Isn't this wonderful? Isn't this wonderful? Isn't this beautiful? Isn't this cool? So the majority of our videos are like that. Um, but in order to become popular in mainstream Japanese media as a foreigner, that's all you can show, right? Um, some of you might remember about seven or eight years ago, um, Cool Japan um, contacted us and said um, they, wanted, they wanted to feature our videos on, on NHK on television. Um, and they wanted me to go to Tokyo um, and be in the studio and be interviewed in relation to our videos, right? And I just, I couldn't do it, you know? I hesitated and, and they said, oh, you know, we'll pay for your airfare and we'll put you up in a hotel and, and you know, you can come and, and Cool Japan, those of you who haven't seen it, is a big panel of foreigners who've been in Japan for less than a year um, who, who, who basically go on about how cool Japan is. Um, and they wanted me to go sit there with the uh, presenters in front of that panel and, and you know, introduce my own videos and talk about what we do. And I just couldn't come at it because to do that, you've got to put that filter on. You know, there's no way. I actually said to them at the time, I wanted to talk about a couple of other things. And I said, is it possible for me to mention, at the time we were, we were just getting going on the English Friendly Japan thing, um, and I think that's really important to foreigners living in Japan, you know, and, you know, I want to talk about that a bit and, and just, you know, some realities about what it's like being a foreigner in Japan, but they just can't do it. And fair enough. I mean, the show's called Cool Japan, you know, that's what they're all about, you know, but it's a good example of, of the filter that you have to use, you know, and that we see it all the time. I mean, there's another guy just came to mind. There's a guy called Jason who um, does their, uh, when they have the Let's Learn English shows, right, which are just terrible. They'll have, they'll have a 30-minute English lesson, you know, can you ride a unicycle, right? And then the, the teacher, who's the Japanese guy, standing behind the table, behind the counter sort of thing with his 
looking very sort of academic and he explains in Japanese so if you listen to this it's supposed to be an English lesson but what you hear is this middle-aged Japanese guy talking on and on and on in Japanese explaining some aspect of English um, and then on comes Jason hey right and Jason's big personality and sort of like a, a clown he comes on and he's hey and can you ride a unicycle and then off he goes again and then the Japanese teacher does all the talking about uh, explaining how to ride a unicycle and whatever you know? so they usually have a 30 minute English lesson that, that teaches you know one phrase or something and, and most of it is just this Japanese dude talking um, but Jason's the entertainment see and and so Jason has to you've got to swallow your, your oh, I shouldn't say swallow your dignity but but basically you have to just the words that are coming to mind I'll tell you the truth the words that are coming to mind swallow your dignity swallow your pride and um, sell out that they're the words that come to mind when I think about this stuff and when you see these guys there's not a lot of them by the way you know there's not a lot of them but there are some foreigners on Japanese TV and when you listen to them and watch how they behave they just they just sell out basically they have to they have to because they have to they have to behave really Japanese of course and it, look and this again this isn't a criticism this is an observation okay this is just an observation that I mean we're in Japan right and 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 in in reality I spend a lot of my time behaving Japanese as well you have to I'm in Japan right so depending on the circumstance, if I'm in my own house with my family, I can pretty much behave how I want, pretty much. But there are a lot of circumstances in my day-to-day -day life, particularly at work, where I have to behave Japanese too. And that's fair enough, we're in Japan, right? But these guys have to do it to a whole new level. I mean, in my life, I have opportunities to express my opinion on things or, or or not do things that I don't want to do that, that you know it's like going on cool Japan you know and that's why I didn't go on there was because I, I couldn't I couldn't stay within the guidelines you know I couldn't just sit there and 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 you know I know how I've got to behave and how I've got to speak if I go if I'd gone on that show I know what I had to do and I, I just couldn't do it you know, I just couldn't do it because oh, I just couldn't do it, you know. And and the guys that are personalities that are, that are popular on Japanese TV, that's what they do. And and sometimes, particularly if it's a subject that could be delicate, and you listen to what they say, and they're really careful. They're really, really careful what they say. They're really careful. Oh, and they react just like the other Japanese people do, you know. And, and they, they play the game. So all that fake stuff I've talked about before on Japanese TV, how... How all the reactions are really exaggerated and there's a lot of acting going on you know just in normal conversation and, and discussions you can see when they're acting you know and everybody has to react react the same so if there's something that, that, that they're talking about and everybody's acting amazed everybody has to act amazed and if everybody's acting surprised everybody has to act surprised and if everybody oh, and it, you have to do the same reaction and you watch these guys and you know that American guy that's, you know, you know that he's not so amazed by that story, but he'll be pretending to be, like all the Japanese, oh, yeah, yeah, sugoi ne, you know, and he'll say all the same stuff that the Japanese people are saying. So it's a formula. And again, it's not a criticism, but it's what's required. If you want to be accepted by the mainstream media, I mean, this isn't, for most of us, this isn't an issue, right? But it's just an observation. And, and those of you who, who live in Japan or have spent time here would have seen this. You would have seen these guys. There's not a lot of them, but there are some on Japanese TV that are sort of accepted. I'm trying to remember the, uh, Dave, Dave, somebody's another one. There's a bunch of them, you know, but they're very careful. Sometimes if it is a topic that they're talking about that is, is about uh, something that's not Japan, it's something outside Japan, Sometimes they'll turn to the foreigner for their perspective on it. Um, but even then, usually they're, they're very, very careful about what they say and how they say it. So, and now and again, so that's the mainstream media and the people on the mainstream media. And then the connection between that and YouTube. When we get these YouTubers that are talked about on the mainstream media, it's usually, it's usually the ones that are within that. And that's sort of what they're trying to frame me into when they did the cool Japan stories and, and they, that's exactly what they did 
the, those of you who haven't seen that video, they actually took videos that, that made Japan look good out of, out of our videos and just showed the ones that made Japan look good and amazing and cool and gave the impression that I was just amazed and impressed. And it, it, it was fair enough too, because the videos that they showed, I was impressed or uh, sort of thing. The, there was one of them was interesting, was a story about um, a guard, the guard man. There was some work going on on a road and there was like 12 or 14 guard man in a really short piece of road. And sarcastically at the end, I said, I said, so obviously I felt really safe driving down that piece of road because there were 14 Gardaman, right? And I was sort of being sarcastic because it was like, it wasn't, it wasn't really necessary, you know, two Gardaman probably would have been enough. Um, but when they put it on Cool Japan, they said, oh, the foreigner was impressed with how safe it was. And I was like, yeah, not really. <laughs> they missed the subtlety. Japanese people don't get sarcasm. So, yeah, so it's just a thing. I mean, I normally don't, talk about foreigners in Japan or I'm not really interested in that because it's not really the topic you know but anything and everything about Japan and the truth is the reality is that the foreigners in Japanese media um, is a is a thing that's in Japan so that's why it's being addressed but yeah just there's a formula there's a formula to it they've got to put the filters on behave very Japanese say only positive things about Japan, nothing critical. I mean, those guys, those guys are in a position where they could say things. Hey, look, the truth is there is a lot of discrimination against foreigners in Japan. And the truth is that, you know, there is all these things that are difficult for foreigners in Japan. They're in a position to be able to do that. But the problem is if they did that, they probably wouldn't be on Japanese TV anymore because it had, it had embarrassed Japanese people. Japanese people don't want to hear that. That's why Cool Japan was actually supposed to be a thing for tourism, to bring tourism into Japan. It was supposed to be for foreigners to watch and bring tourism into Japan, but it wasn't real popular with foreigners. It was more p popular with Japanese people, and that's why it's still on Japanese TV, because the Japanese people like watching this, this program about how cool they are, right? <laughs> which is sort of funny. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's turned out to be really popular. So that's what they want to hear. That's what they want to hear and that's what they want to see. They don't want to hear anything critical or anything, anything that might make them feel a bit bad. And that's Japanese TV all over. I mean, it's the same for Japanese people. You, you don't see uh, current affair type shows on television where they're being critical of their own society. They rarely would even, they wouldn't do that because they know their viewers don't want to hear that. So it's all about maintaining the status quo. We're okay the way we are. We don't need to improve anything. It's all good, right? That's what they want to hear. And the foreigners that are happy to toe the line and, and agree with that. <laughs> yep, yep, Japan's all perfect just as it is. It's a wonderful, wonderful place. We love it just how it is. No need to improve anything. They're the ones that, uh, that the, the Japanese media like and will, will uh, get behind. So anybody that rocks the boat and says anything else is uh, not popular. <laughs> so, anyway, that was that. Just covered that. My feeling was about this one. I, I wasn't sure whether to do this video or not. And I decided, no, I've got to do it. Because as with all these, I know this will be an unpopular video. I know it will be. But whenever I have an idea like this, if I don't cover it, I feel like I've left a hole in our body of work, right? Because anything and everything about Japan. So if the reality is there are foreigners on in the media in Japan, but I don't cover that topic, then it's not anything and everything about Japan, is it? I've left a hole. So that's my feeling about a lot of these videos that I don't really want to make because I know they won't be popular and they'll be misinterpreted and misrepresented and all sorts of things. But my thinking is if I don't cover every topic that comes up, then I've left the hole, haven't I? So, anyway, that was that. That's more than enough of that. <laughs> I'll continue to be unpopular. <laughs> it's better. It is better. You feel you feel better about it. I mean, it must be nice to be on Japanese TV and getting paid big money to do it, but I feel better being a nobody and uh, being able to say what I want without having to worry about it, you know? Because, you know, you can't be a popular personality on, in Japan and be saying stuff that isn't popular that wouldn't that wouldn't happen so anyway more unpopular videos coming soon